okay so hari krishna so welcome everyone um, welcome um his holiness bhakti vikna vinasa narishma maharaj and also all devotees so today on this very auspicious day all right so we are meeting here to to discuss the glories of varaha dev anyway uh, before we start uh, just a, a quick introduction about his holiness his holiness bhakti vikna vinasa narishma maharaj is a disciple of his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad founder acharya of the international society for krishna consciousness so since young even during his university days he was <clears throat> he was studying engineering at harriet watt university and he always keen in spirituality and was searching for a purpose in life and preferring life of austerity and simplicity in 1970 maharaj came to krishna consciousness after hearing the famous radha krishna temple recording all right uh album and uh, and also by reading this book called krishna the supreme personality of god hit and and okay and also the topmost uh, yoga system by prabhupad maharaj left his career immediately and joined the temple as brahmachari monk and was happy to join the daily sankirtan party that is chanting on the streets distributing transcendental literature and preaching krishna consciousness at the age of 22 maharaj took shelter and or an harinam initiation from his lotus feet of srila prabhupad in london in summer 1971 in 1994 his holiness entered into renounced order of life or sanyasi all right and um, and actively sharing the philosophy of bhakti yoga to all inquisitive students across the globe especially in philippines thailand malaysia singapore vietnam middle east and russia His holiness is also an ardent believer in the phrase to meet people where they are at okay as an example he learned chinese language including reading and writing so that he could teach the philosophy to the taiwanese and also to the honkies hong kong people all right he is an authority of bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam and also chaitanya charitamrita and all revealed scripture by on bhakti yoga he makes the ancient wisdom accessible practical and relatable to everyone be they children teenager householder or even the seniors he has been teaching in mayapur institute for the last 10 years maharaj also leads the annual navadip mandal parikram and is coming uh, pre gaura purnima navadip mandal parikram in 2023 would be his 33rd year of this parikram so please join me in welcome his holiness bhakti vikna vinasa narishma maharaj with the three loud Hari bol all of you can unmute yourself and say hari bol welcome hari bol hari bol hari bol hari krishna so maraj i will uh, leave the thing to you you can start maraj all right prema thank you prema om magyana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chaksur militanyena tasmay shri gurave namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hari Hari So as we heard today is the uh appearance day of Lord Varaha I was going to share a screen is it can who's the host Yes Maraj uh okay I will enable them enable um, share screen Okay now you can share screen Maraj Thank you Hmm 
You cannot start screen sharing while the other participant is sharing. Someone else is sharing. Okay, how about now, Maharaj? Okay, thank you, Prabhu. All right. So, here we have all right, the birth and deeds of Lord Varaha. There you can see Lord Varaha. Hmm. So, this is discussed in the third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam about the appearance of Lord Varaha. It's in the conversation between Maitri and Vidura, 13th chapter you can see. So, describing the birth of Varaha Dev. What happened was, at the beginning of the day of Lord Brahma, Swayam Bhuvamanu and Shatarupa were created from the body of Lord Brahma. And they were asked to help Lord Brahma to fill up the universe, to help him to populate the universe. But Swayam Bhuvamanu and his wife noticed that the earth planet had fallen into the bottom of the Garbodak ocean. So they, they approached Lord Brahma and asked him to do something about this, that you want us to help you to populate the universe, but the earth planet is there in the bottom of the universe. It's fallen into the bottom of the universe. And so Lord Brahma, while he was contemplating this, well, actually, be, before we continue, we might first of all mention what causes the earth to fall into the bottom of the universe. Well, there is some discussion on this. Prabhupada does mention some things. He mentions about how there was a great demon, Haranyaksha, and his habit was to go and dig up everywhere in the search for gold. Hiranyaksha, like Hiranyakashipu, he was strongly attracted to gold. And so he would dig up the earth everywhere looking for gold. And Srila Prabhupada explains that by digging up the earth, you create the imbalance in the planet and it can cause the whole planet to fall into the bottom of the universe. So Srila Prabhupada questions, he said, because people are drilling for oil and they're taking a lot of oil out of the ground. So this, in the future, this could going to create serious problems and it could even result in an imbalance in the whole earth planet and it could fall into the bottom of the universe. So that's a warning which is given to <laughs> people who are drilling up the earth. Just like some the people go drilling, searching for gold, and they dig up so much, they, and they digging for coal also. And because of all the mines, you see rivers disappear, rivers go underground, because they've created so many mines below the ground. So the whole rivers disappear, they just go underground. And so in the same way, we, we take so many, so much of nature's resources, in the far, not necessarily gold, as I mentioned, oil, it can also create big problems in the social system. We don't want to be responsible for the earth falling into the bottom of the universe. So anyway, Swayam Bhuvamanu came there and approaching Lord Brahma, and so Brahma was thinking what to do. And so it mentioned here, all of a sudden, while Brahma was engaged in thinking, a small form of a boar came out of his nostril. And the measurement of the creature was not more than the upper portion of a thumb. And so, <laughs> the upper portion of a thumb, it means very small. It came out from the nostril of Brahma. It's an unusual place to take birth. <laughs> it, it's described actually that uh, 
Lord Varaha, who is coming out from the nostril of Brahma, that he is the personified Vedas, because the nostril of Lord Brahma was used to breathe in, and he breathed in the Vedic knowledge. And so when Lord Brahma breathed out, it was the, Lord, the boar which came out. And that boar is not different from the what he, he breathed in the Vedas and the boar came out. And so the boar is the personification of the Vedic knowledge. It's an interesting comparison. <laughs> Actually, all the avatars of the Lord are personified Vedas because they all represent the Vedic knowledge. So the, the Lord appeared from the nostril. It's unusual. How could the Lord come from the nostril? Well, we read about Haranyakash, uh, about Haran, uh, Lord Narsinghadev, Narsingha avatar. Where does he take birth from? He came from a pillar. The Lord, the Lord can come from anywhere he chooses. He is completely free and independent. So in the case of Lord Nishringadev, he appeared from a pillar. In the case of Lord Varaha, he came from the nostril of Lord Brahma. He doesn't have to come from the womb. Of course, some forms of the, many of the forms of the Lord do. But here you see Lord Varaha, very special uh, avatar, and he's come from the nostril of Lord Brahma, and very tiny in the beginning. But then it, it goes on, text 19, that was text 18 we read, text 19 says, O descendant of Bharat, while Brahma was observing him, that boar became situated in the sky in a wonderful manifestation, as gigantic as a great elephant. So you can see, very quickly became so huge, a gigantic elephant is situated in the sky. Actually, we'll read as we go on how he becomes so big that he's all the way up to the topmost planet in the universe, up to Satya Loka. Just gigantic form. So this is the birth of Lord Varaha. And of and he's come to help to restore the situation. Hmm? Now, we want you to understand there's actually two Varahas. <laughs> and they appear in different Chakshusas. You've got one that's appearing in the time of the Sweta Varaha. You've got this, the white Varaha who comes in the time of Swayambhuva Manu, and you've got a red Varaha, and he appears at the time of Chakshusha Manu. So the Acharyas tell us that there is these two forms of Lord Varaha, and one is responsible for rescuing the earth, and the other is responsible for killing Haranyaksha. Different man in one day of Brahma you have fourteen Manus. So Swayambhuva Manu was the first Manu in the day of Brahma, and Chakshusa Manu he comes after Swayambhuva Manu, but different color. Lord Vara appears in different colors. The white color rescues the earth, and the red color kills Haranyaksha. And so it said in the, the Acharyas tell us that in the Srimad Bhagavatam, um, Maitreya, who is describing this, has combined the two. He's, he's amalgamated, brought the two, two pastimes together into one for the sake of convenience, just narrating it to uh, Vidura. So, that is actually taken from the purport there. You can check in 13th chapter, text 31, 14th chapter, text 2 also. 
both purports to scribe. So we want to understand this very special form of the Lord as a boar. You know, boars or pigs, you know, they're, they're like disgusting creatures. We think, oh, you just keep away from them, you know, it's so dirty. They're always, uh, sit. if you see them in the villages in India, they're usually there in the sewers and they're dirty and black, you know. And we just, you wouldn't want to get near them. But here we have the Lord appearing in the form of a boar. And it's, we should understand, why would the Lord take that form? So, mentioned here, text number 28, it says, He was personally the Supreme Lord Vishnu and was therefore transcendental. Yet, because he had the body of a hog, he searched after the earth by smell. His tusks were fearful, and he glanced over the devotee brahmanas engaged in offering prayers. Thus he entered the water. The water being the water in the bottom half of the universe, the Garbhodak Ocean on which Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is laying. Garbhodakshaya Vishnu lays on the Garbhodak ocean and from his navel the lotus flower came out and protrudes up into the universe. So the different planets were all situated around the lotus, but somehow due to the misdeeds of the different demons, the earth planet had fallen into the bottom of the universe. And therefore, in order to pick the earth up from the bottom of the universe, the Lord has taken this form of a hog. Because the hog has that ability to search things out just by smell. He has a powerful uh, sense of smell and he, he want, he's going to dive into the bottom of the universe, the earth, the, 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 the whole universe has this ocean at the bottom and you know things do fall into the bottom. The, the, the ocean wouldn't necessarily be very clean. Many things must be have fallen there into the bottom of the ocean. If, if the whole earth planet could fall into the ocean, there could be a lot of other things there also in the bottom of the ocean. So Lord Varaha, the Lord comes, he's taken this form as Varaha, just so he can make use of this Varaha, this pig form or this hog form and he's got tusks with which he will use to pick up the uh, earth from the bottom of the universe. So with the body of a hog, it's appropriate for him to be able to search out the earth planet by smell. So this is how we understand why the Lord has taken the hog form. Uh, an interesting point is brought up here. The artists for the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, you know, they were engaged with having to paint these different pictures of the Lord's pastimes. So, one of the artists, one, the one lady who was one of the artists, she wrote to Prabhupada and she asked Prabhupada about how to do this because you know, to paint a boar, to paint boars or hogs, they're not the most beautiful creatures. They're not the most uh, captivating, you know, and how to present it. And so she asked, you know, this, I'm supposed to present uh, art, an artistic representation of this Lord Varaha, and he's a hog. So, Hogs are not beautiful. Should I make him beautiful? Because he is supposed to be the Supreme Lord Vishnu. So should he be beautiful? And so Srila Prabhupada replied to the artist and he told her, he said, yes, he said, he said, you have to do your best. Krishna will help you. He said, certainly he should be attractive. At the same time, you have to show him in the form of a hog. 
So do your best and try to make him as, a, as attractive as possible. <laughs> and so that, that was how, uh, that's one of the challenges which some devotees have in their service. Not a very easy service to present these illustrations and at the same time to make the Lord look all attractive. Mm. So, this, this is from the purport. I'm not going to read it all, but uh, the point is, Prabhupada is making in the purport is, is explaining that, that although the body of the hog is material, the Lord, he is not material. His form is spiritual. Although he's taken the form of a hog, Lord, Lord Varaha, it's not material, it's a spiritual form. And we have to understand that in the, the nature of the activities which Lord Varaha is going to perform. He's, first of all, he's, he's taken birth from the nostril of Brahma. And now he's taken a gigantic form which is spread throughout, beginning from the Satya Loka, Satya Loka meaning the planet of Brahma. And so the, the body of the Lord is fully transcendental. But he has taken this form just so that he can utilize it to find the earth planet and to bring it out from the bottom of the universe and put it back in position. And Prabhupada mentions here in the purport, the Lord can perfectly play the part of any living entity. So we can't say, oh, he has to just be a, a cowherd boy and plays the flute, or he has to be a king like Lord Rama. But he, Prabhupada said he can play any part. He can be the hog. He can be a dog if he wants. I remember I heard there was one man came to Prabhupada and he was asking Prabhupada, he said, can, can God be in the form of a snake? The man, the man was actually a spiritual leader, but he didn't know the answer to the question. And he came to Prabhupada for guidance. And he asked Prabhupada, can, could God actually take the form of a snake? And Prabhupada said, yes, if he wants. He can take any form he likes. He can play any part. And, you, and he's not limited to taking, to play the parts of all the different living entities which are here in our creation. We see how the Lord can appear as Lord Nishingadev, half man and half lion. We don't see that form anywhere, but the Lord, he can take that form and he can play that part. So this is the nature of the inconceivable potencies of the Lord that he can do all of these wonderful things. All right, and, and then Prabhupada talks how this form of the boar is certainly fearful for the non-devotees, but for the devotees, there's no question of fear. Just like we see Lord Nishringadev, Lord Nishringadev is very fearful to non-devotees, but Prahlad was not afraid. And Prabhupada gives the example, just like the lion, she has her cubs. The, so we will be afraid of a lion. We won't like to go near a lion, but the cubs, they're not afraid of their mother. <laughs> and so the same way, Lord Varaha is pleasing to the devotees. And the devotees feel transcendental happiness actually seeing this form of Lord Varaha. We, you, you, in, in South India, uh, in the past, the worship of Lord Varaha was very popular. It was very, very popular. It's, it's not so much popular today, but still, they're mainly Lord Nishingadev and Lord Varaha. These two forms of the Lord are very popular. And in the past, there was a kingdom in South India where the king was a great devotee of Lord Varaha, and his coins, he, his currency was all in varahas. The measurement of his currency was varahas. 
he was so devoted. So, interesting to know how people are devoted. Nowadays, you know, we, we don't find too many people much devoted to, is to Lord Varaha, although there's a number of people devoted to Lord Nisringadev, but the worship of Lord Varaha is not very common. <laughs> but in the past it was, many kings worshipped Lord Varaha. So, what are his activities? Well, first of all, we said to pick up the earth and restore it, put it back into position. So Lord Bohr easily took the earth on his tusks and got it out of the water. He, he, and then it says, uh, thus he appeared very splendid. Then his anger, glowing like the Surashan wheel, he immediately killed the demon Haranyaksha, although he tried to fight with the Lord. So it was Haranyaksha who was uh, searching everywhere, looking for someone to give him a good fight. And he approached Varaha, uh, he, he approached Varuna, rather, he approached Varuna, and Lord v Varuna, the god of the sea, told him that, oh, yeah, very soon you should meet Lord Vishnu, he will give you a good fight. You will see that you will, you will never defeat Lord Vishnu. So Haranyaksha became eager to fight with Lord Vishnu. And so it happened that when the Lord appeared as Varaha, at that time Haranyaksha spotted uh, Lord Varaha. And there's some very nice humor there actually, uh, between the, the, the talks between Haranyakashipu, Haranyaksha and Lord Varaha. Haranyaksha sees Lord Varaha and he addresses him saying, O oh, amphibious beast, amphibious beast means a, a beast which can be, live in the water as well as on land. And Haranyaksha was challenging the Lord Varaha to fight. Oh, amphibious beast, you know, where are you going? And Lord Varaha replies to, to Haranyaksha, he says, yes, true it is that I am a beast and I'm meant just for hunting dogs like you. <laughs> Lord Varaha says to Haranyaksha, yes, I'm a beast and I'm meant for hunting dogs like you. And just like sometimes uh, they have these hunt, fox hunts and so on. Uh, in, in England they have that custom, they like to go on horses and they have packs of dogs and they would go and hunt wild boars and things like that in the forest. And so the wild, wild boar would really be torn, he would fight with the dogs. And these boars, they have a razor sharp horn and they could tear the dogs to pieces and they go and fight with the wild boars and they come, come back two or three dogs would be cut to pieces by the boar before they could get the boar. They would just outnumber the boar by the sheer number of the dogs, but several of the dogs would perish by the power of the, the boar, the wild boars. So here you have Haranyaksha fighting with Lord Varaha. <laughs> and it, it was quite a fight, quite a challenge, you know, they're speaking nasty words to each other. Haranyaksha is trying to insult Lord Varaha, and Lord Varaha is taking him to task. He's hitting him back, letting him know <laughs> that I'm ready to fight with you. And of course, Lord Varaha did. He killed Haranyaksha just with a, a slap of his hoof on the face of Haranyaksha. He hit him and killed the demon Haranyaksha. So this pastime of Lord Varaha fighting with the demon Haranyaksha is very much appreciated. Let's read some of the more statements from the purports here, this describing the activities of Lord Varaha. Yeah, well, that's talking about the two different divisions 
And then says, this particular appearance of the Bohr incarnation actually took place in the Swayambhuva devastation, when all other planets other than the higher ones, Jana, Maha and Satya, all they're the, the planets at the very top of the universe, so all of the other planets were merged in the water of devastation. So the universe is like that. There are 14 different levels of planetary systems. And you've got Jana, Maha, and then Tapaloka is also there as well. And Satya, Loka, there are four planets up at the top of the universe. And they're above Swarga Loka. But you can see Swarga Loka, uh, Bur, Bhuva, and Swa, the three planetary systems, Bhuv, Bhuva, Loka, Bhumandala. Bu We're in the Bhumandala. Earth planet is in the Bhumandala situation, and Bhuvar is above that, and Swarga is a heavenly planet. They were all merged in the water of devastation, which takes place usually at the end of a day of Brahma. And sometimes there's also devastation at the end of a life of a Manu. But anyway, we're told here, in the Swayambhuva devastation, all the planets other than the higher ones were merged in the water of devastation. So this particular incarnation of the boar was seen by the inhabitants of the planets mentioned above. Who are these inhabitants? In the planet, the, these are the great sages and great yogis. People like the four Kumaras live up there on Janaloka, Mahaloka, Satyaloka. You've got Lord Brahma up there. So many great sages and great yogis, they're up there in these higher planets. And they, these people living on these higher planets, they actually witnessed this Bohr incarnation. And pra Prabhupada writes here that Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti suggests that the sage Maitreya amalgamated both the Bohr incarnations in different devastations and summarized them in his description to Vidura. So they, they, they saw <laughs> that these pastimes taking place. And we will see how they glorified the Lord because they saw the Lord appearing and they knew who he was. And just like here in, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here in Mayapur and in Mayapur, we always go on Parikrama every year. As you heard, I, you know, we, I take part in the Parikrama and we go around the, the nine islands. And one of the islands which we go to is Koladweep. And Koladweep is a place where Lord Varaha appeared. So Lord Varaha appeared there in Koladweep in the Satya Yuga. And there's a temple there actually. The temple that was, it's there, one of Prabhupada's god brothers, uh, Sridhar Swami, uh, he can, has a temple there in Navadweep. It's part of Navadweep. It's called Koladweep. And Koladweep means the boar that Lord Varaha actually appeared there in the Satya Yuga. There was a Brahmana who was a great devotee of Lord Varaha and he prayed to Lord Varaha and Lord Varaha actually appeared to him in the Satya Yuga. And so the, in honor of that, the Sridhar Maharaj, had a, he has a deity of Lord Varaha there in the, their temple. In, uh, which is their temple is there in, it's in Koladweep in Nav it's a part of Navadweep so we when we go on Parikrama we have the opportunity to see these things alright so we're going to hear about the sages glorifying Lord Varaha the Sri Vaishnavas they're very fond of glorifying Lord Varaha mm. And there are special prayers to glorify Lord Varaha, just like there are prayers to glorify Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna's, you know, Lord Krishna says, Sarva Dharmam Parigashna Mami Kam Lord Krishna said, just surrender to me. I, I will, 
I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Give up all forms of religion and just surrender to me. I will free you from all sinful reactions. So in this way, Lord Krishna promises to protect his devotees. And similarly, Lord Rama also says, in uh, Ramayana, it's also said when Vibhishan came there to join the army of Lord Ramachandra, there was some doubt. Hanuman was, you know, some of them were not sure, should we, should we accept him into our army? Can we trust him? Maybe he's a spy because he's the brother of Ravan. But Lord Ramachandra said, oh, anyone who even one time comes to me and surrenders to me, anyone who comes even once to me and says that I am yours, then I will accept him and I will give him all, I will free him from all fear and he will never have to worry, he will, he will be safe for I will protect him always. So Lord Ramachandra said, this is my vow. And we have the same kind of statements with Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha also says that somebody remembers me and meditates on me and remembers me in this form, then I will give him eternal life and I deliver him from the material world. So these kind of prayers are uh, uh, often recited by the Sri Vaishnavas and some of our Gaudiya Vaishnavas also, they're familiar with these things. So Prabhupada writes in the purport here, which is from chapter 13, text 36, that we cannot get the results of sacrifice unless we observe strict regulations. Some people ask, is regulation, is it important to follow the rules and regulations? Yes, it's important. You want to get the results of our activities, we have to follow the rules and regulations. So Prabhupada explains, in this age, there's practically no facility for performing sacrifices in strict discipline. Therefore, in this age of Kali, there is a stricture regarding such sacrifices. It is explicitly directed that one should perform Sankirtan Yagna and nothing more. The incarnation of the Supreme Lord is Yagneshwara, and unless one has respect for the incarnation of the Lord, he cannot perfectly perform sacrifice. In other words, taking shelter of the Lord and rendering service unto him is the factual performance of all sacrifices. So, <laughs> Prabhupada's explaining to us the importance of rules and regulations and how to perform sacrifice what we should do, we should take shelter of the Lord and rend give service to him, also render service. And what service is most important is Sankirtan Yagna. One should perform Sankirtan Yagna and nothing more. So this is the Kali, it said Kali Yuga Dharma, Hari Nam Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Vini Nahi Tara Pravartan. In the Kali Yuga, the process of religion is practiced by the performance of Sankirtan. So this is important for us. We do want to take the advantage of engaging in Sankirtan. Hearing more of the glories of Lord Varaha, he's described like this, O lifter of the earth, the earth with its mountains, which you have lifted with your tusks, is situated as beautifully as a lotus flower with leaves sustained by an infuriated elephant just coming out of the water. So, Maitri is giving this example, this, well, actually it's the sages, he's repeating the words of the great sages in the higher planets. 
they're glorifying Lord Varaha in this way. How the Lord has picked up the earth with his tusks and putting it back in position. And it's mentioned here that he has compared the beauty of Lord Varaha, remember in the form of a hog, picking up, is compared to the infuriated elephant coming out of the water and decorated with lotus flower, with leaves. And so this comparison is given. Earlier, Lord Varaha was compared to an elephant, a big elephant. So again, the elephant is mentioned again. And, but this time in relation to his picking up the earth with all of its mountains. But just like the elephant picks up the lotus flower with leaves, it's insignificant. And so in the same way, Lord Varaha picking up the earth, it's insignificant to him. It's not a great, not a great difficulty. In, uh, in New York City, there's a place called, there's a place on Fifth Avenue called Rockefeller Center. Anybody who goes to New York, you must know the Rockefeller Center, it's right halfway down Fifth Avenue. And so there, they have an atlas. They have this big bronze statue of Atlas. You know, Atlas is in the Greek mythology. There's a pastime where Atlas is picking up the earth. So Atlas, this personality is portrayed picking up the earth and he's, he's, you know, he's gigantic and he's got big biceps and very muscular and he's picking up the earth, but still you can see it's really heavy for him. He's struggling to pick it up. And so Srila Prabhupada said, yeah, for Atlas it's difficult for him to pick up the earth, but for the Lord, there's no trouble at all. It's an easy thing. Lord Varaha is picking up the earth from the bottom on his tusks. There's no sweat. Another, another time, artist, one artist was painting Krishna, and he put Krishna, he drew Krishna with, in a very muscular way, with big arms, powerful arms, biceps, and like that. And Prabhupada said, no, no, this is not necessary. Krishna doesn't need big muscles to pick up the Govardhan hill. <laughs> this thing is that Krishna's body is spiritual, it's not material. So we have to understand the nature of the body of the Lord. So Prabhupada's purport here, Prabhupada's writing, the fortune of the earth planet is praised because of its being specifically sustained by the Lord. Its beauty is appreciated and compared to that of a lotus flower situated on the trunk of an elephant. As a lotus flower with leaves is very beautifully situated, so the world with its many beautiful mountains appeared on the tusks of the Lord Boar. Actually, another thing happened when Lord Varaha was picking up the earth planet. At that time, the, the deity of the earth planet, the personification of the earth planet, the deity is Mother Bhumi. So Bhumi, she was, you know, she was being picked up by Lord Varaha. At that time, she requested Lord Varaha that he would kindly grant her, a, that he could conceive a child within her. So the Lord, by his mystic potency, Lord Varaha, arranged to impregnate Mother Bhumi. And Mother Bhumi then gave birth to a child. And that child was called Nara. Nara, a, a Bhuma. It was called Bhuma. And when, as a child, he was a very good child. Because he's the child of the earth planet and conceived by the Lord himself. And so as a, young, as a young child, he was very good, very obedient, and very polite, well behaved. But later on, he got bad association. He started to associate with, with Bana. He would associate with a demon called Bana, and he developed all bad qualities. 
So much so that when Lord Krishna appeared, Lord Krishna had to kill this demon. Although, although he was actually the child of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna personally killed him because he was so sinful and degraded. He had taken all the princesses and kept them all prisoners and he was terrorizing all the all the other all he was terrorizing everywhere. So Bomasura was killed by the Lord himself, although he was actually the child of the Lord. So the Lord said, if my child, my own son is not behave properly, then I have to take action against him. So that was another pastime in relation to Lord Varaha. And here's text, text 43. Text 43. Who else but you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, could deliver the earth from within the water? It is not very wonderful for you, however, because you have acted most wonderfully in the creation of the universe. By your energy, you have created this wonderful cosmic manifestation. So the sages are appreciating the power of the Supreme Lord, that for him to deliver the earth from the water, that was nothing, that was insignificant for him, because he is the creator of the whole universe. And the whole universe has infinite numbers of planets. And there are infinite numbers of universes in the material creation. And so <laughs> what is the big thing to pick up one planet from the bottom of the, 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 bottom, of the, uni the bottom of the universe? Not a big deal. The sages in this way, they're glorifying Lord Varaha for his wonderful activities. All right. And Prabhupada in the purport talks about this, about how sometimes people appreciate scientists. Oh, the scientists, science is so wonderful. We've got so many wonderful inventions. But we should give credit to the person behind it. Who's the greatest scientist? Often the greatest scientist is overlooked. We don't even think behind everything. The greatest scientist is Lord Sri Krishna. The ordinary scientists, they're simply making use of whatever facilities Lord Krishna has given them. But the original scientist is Krishna himself. And he is the one behind everything. Hmm? And then one more verse here. Oh Lord, there is no limit to your wonderful activity. Anyone who, anyone who desires to know the limit of your activities is certainly nonsensical. Everyone in this world is conditioned by the powerful mystic potencies. Please bestow your causeless mercy upon these conditioned souls. <laughs> So the sages are glorifying the infinite powers which the Lord has. There's no limit. We have to, under, to understand the Lord. We have to understand there is such things as inconceivable potencies, achincha shakti. There's no limit to what, and if we think he's limited, then we're the biggest fool. That is our problem. Hmm. All right, so maybe we'll stop here and we'll ask if there's any questions. Oh, you can hear at the end of the chapter, Lord Varaha returns to his own abode. That happens. And here's the benediction of hearing about Lord Varaha, the pastimes of Lord Varaha, the, the shruti vow, the fruit of hearing the pastime. If one hears and describes in a devotional attitude this auspicious narration of Lord Bor which is worthy of description. The Lord, who is within the heart of everyone, is very pleased. You want to please Krishna? You want to please the Lord here? Just simply describe these pastimes of Lord Varaha. This is devotional service. And also, if you're hearing, 
you're also giving pleasure to the Lord also. Not just only the one describing, but everyone who's hearing, they're also giving pleasure to the Lord. And so Prabhupada talks how we need to do this. This is important for us to hear about the Lord regularly. In this way, cultivate our devotion. Hmm. And so there, there are many nice purports there. We won't go through them all. Are there any questions? Yes, somebody has a hand up there. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances, all flourish to Prabhupada. I have a question. Um, did, the, um, did the whole Boo Mandala got uh, immersed in the, the Garbhodaga Ocean or just the earth? How, how is it? Because sometimes we see the picture of Lord Varaha with the uh, oval uh, earth on his hand. And uh, some, sometime later, I also say, I also saw, the, no, it's not the oval. It should be like uh, the cylindrical something. Uh, they were saying like that. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite clear what your question is. Okay. Uh, Maharaj, are you able to hear me now? Uh, I don't know. Yes, loud and clear, Mataji. Okay. Okay, now I cannot hear Guru Maharaj. Maharaj, I think you have muted. You are muted, Maharaj. Thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, Guru Maharaj. I, I, I confused the question. My question is whether uh, Varaha, uh, Varade, Dev, Hiranyaksha uh, immersed the whole Bhu Mandala or just the earth or some. I couldn't. Yeah. Yes, just the earth. The way just it's to, the, just the okay. earth, not the whole Bhu Mandala, but just the earth had fallen into the bottom of the universe. Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, th this Varaha picture with the uh, round shape of the earth uh, with so many years before they, uh, is, it, uh, is it drawn so many years before and it's true that they already know that the earth is, uh, is in a round shape, Guru Maharaj, they say like, uh, like that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, usually we will depict the earth in that manner. Most people, we understand the earth in that manner, round shape. How round it is, you know, that's debatable. Okay, right. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Bhu Mandala is not round. Bhu Mandala will be more flat. But the earth is situated there in Bhu Mandala. So just the earth got immersed in the Gar Garbhodava Ocean. Yes. Okay. Right, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, just want to add something. In South India, uh, uh, they say from the Varaha Purana that uh, this, uh, when uh, Varaha Dev picked up the, the Goddess Earth, Goddess Earth um, uh, heard that uh, chanting and hearing is the most important and she wants to convey this to the people of Earth. So she came as a Arvar Andal. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes, Guru Maharaj. And, uh, they, Mother Bhumi came as Andal. Yes, Andal. And she has the same message as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that uh, Nama Sangirtanam is the uh, best method for uh, achieving uh, going back. Oh, good. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Very nice lecture. Thanks for the opportunity on this auspicious day. Thank you. Yes. So we're remembering Lord Varaha on this auspicious day, right? <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Of course, Lord Varaha, oh yes, oh, here's a question there, it's Yogita, yes? Hare Krishna Gurudev, please like some Amala uh you just mentioned in the class that uh, from uh, the four Kumaras are yet residing in uh, Gyanaloka. They could see Lord Varadev performing his pastimes. 
But Gurudev, haven't they become pure devotees already? Wouldn't they be in... How come they're not in Vaikuntha, Gurudev? Sorry, I haven't read anything about them, so I really don't know much. I thought they were supposed to be in Vaikuntha after... I mean, sorry, I just need clarity on this point. Well, the four Kumaras, generally, <coughs> they will reside in the upper region of the universe, up there in Tapaloka or Janaloka, Mahaloka, one of these planets there. And they will reside there, they'll wait there, and like generally it will be like till the end of the lifetime of Lord Brahma. And then at that time only, then they can go back to the spiritual world. Ah, okay. So it means at the end of life of Lord Brahma, end of this universe, but they get yeah. to... Mm. Right. Yeah, they have to wait till the end of the life of Lord Brahma. And it's not always that the four Kumaras are pure devotees. Now, sometimes, oh. sometimes they're pure devotees, but not always. And sometimes the four Kumaras may have to... And not only the four Kumaras, but even the great sages, even Lord Brahma, sometimes may not be the pure devotee. And he may have some, he may have his, some separate mentality and that will cause him to take birth again in the material world. He will simply enter into the body of Mahavishnu and remain in the body of Mahavishnu until the next creation and then take birth again in the material world. Oh, Govinda. So we all are really fortunate, huh, Gurudev, because we're in this Kali Yuga of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. We should take advantage. Yes, right. We should take advantage to Sankirtan, but of course not. Uh, you can read more about the four Kumaras and their activities. Mm -hmm. In previous yugas, in Kali Yuga, they don't come here to this earth planet, but in previous yugas, some, like during the time of Prithu Maharaj, they would come. When Prithu Maharaj would be performing sacrifices, sometimes the four Kumaras would come here, they'd be attracted. They would come and, and praise Prithu Maharaj and give instructions. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Ram Goipnath here. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Ram Goipnath from Malaysia. Uh, Maharaj, I, uh, I just want to get confirm any. Uh, is it uh, Naraka Sura was born? Uh, from uh, Varaha, uh, Varaha Dev and uh, Bhuma Devi. Yeah, Naraka Sura is sometimes called also Boma Sura, right? Yeah. That's the same name, same person. And he's born from Bhumi, yeah, the son of Bhumi, and conceived by Lord Varaha. Varaha, okay, okay. Just one for me. And it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Bhagwat. In the Chaitanya Bhagwat, it mentions how the Lord says he would kill his own son. And he did kill his own son, who is just simply a disturbance to the universe. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh -huh. Vivati Sachi has a question. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. <coughs> Guru Maharaj, you said that uh, uh, all avatars of Lord are the manifestations of Vedas, but I didn't under quite understand what does it mean, uh, because, uh, for example, how uh, did Vedas manifest uh, in uh, Lord Rama or in Lord Parashurama and in uh, another avatars of Lord? Uh, can you explain, please? Yes. Well, I explained about Lord Varaha, how the Vedic knowledge was breathed, Lord Brahma breathed in the Vedic knowledge at the beginning of the creation, right? So the Vedic knowledge entered into his nostrils. And because Lord Varaha is coming out of the nostril of Lord Brahma, so it's considered that he is a the personification of that Vedic knowledge, because the Vedic knowledge had gone in, and so it's coming out in the form of Lord Brahma, in the form of Lord Varaha. And the other forms of the Lord, 
they're also considered to be personifications of Vedic knowledge because they represent, they're, they're, they're all described in the Vedic literature. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. And so the Vedas are meant to teach us about the Lord and his different forms and different incarnations. And so when these forms of the Lord come, they actually act, they show everything exactly according to the Vedic teachings. Lord Rama, of course, he is uh, Maria the Avatar. He is perfectly behaving, his, his incarnation of perfect etiquette, perfect behavior for the devotees. So we have to appreciate all these different forms of the Lord that they're all representing the Vedic knowledge that they're telling us about. And the Vedas tell us about the Lord in his different forms. Thank you so much, Guru. Yes, Sri Devi Gorangi has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. My question, Guru Maharaj, is why is Lord Brahma considered a Jiva Tattwa, although he has so much power to create all of us? I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure about this. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Well, Lord Brahma is also described to be Guna Avatar. He's one of the, he's an avatar. He's, he's the, but he can generally, Lord Brahma, the position of Brahma is given to an ordinary jiva. But not just any ordinary jiva, but he's, he's adhikavaye. He has to be very, very, very intelligent, very qualified to take the position of Brahma. And he is empowered then by the Lord also to take that position and to do that work. And so he, he gets the empowerment from the Lord to do this. Right. How does one, how does, how was, how does the devotee able to propagate the holy name of Krishna? He gets empowered by Krishna, right? Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vini Nahi Tara Pravartan. You, you have to have the Krishna Shakti to propagate the holy name. Just like a lawyer is empowered to represent you in the court. And so you don't want to go to court, you hire a lawyer to go and plead on your behalf. And so the same way Krishna empowers devotees to act on his behalf in this world. And so Lord Brahma is an empowered representative of Lord Krishna to do the work of creation. And Lord Brahma is only doing the secondary work of creation. The primary work of creation is all done by Lord Vishnu. But the secondary creation is done by Brahma. Brahma is like engineer. Take the parts and put them together. But the parts are all made by Lord Vishnu. The primary creation is done by Vishnu. But then he empowers Lord Brahma to do creation and of course, Brahma had to also get that empowerment by tapasya, the beginning of the creation. He was doing tapasya for a thousand years of the demigods. And then the Lord was pleased with him and empowered him to do this work of creation. Yes? You Thank understand? You so Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. And sometimes if there's no qualified person to take on the work of Lord Brahma, sometimes the Lord will do it himself. And so it's not that in every case that Brahma is a jiva, but there has to be a qualified person to do it. And if nobody is qualified, then Krishna himself will take on the work. Um, okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh-huh. Okay, Prabhu. Uh, any final questions or comments, anything? Um, Guru Maharaj, I wanted to tell that uh, it's interesting information that uh, there are two Varahas. Uh, the white one who just uh, picked up the earth and the red one who killed the uh, Hiranyaksha. 
so they didn't uh, so the white varaha didn't kill iranyaksha immediately and there was a gap of uh, uh, one manu uh, period of one manu till the next manu came and then uh, the red varaha killed is it like that guru maharaj yes yeah there is certainly a gap i'm not sure when chakshusa manu comes i'm not sure how many manus are there between chakshusa manu and swayambhuva manu but uh, certainly there's a gap there. That's what the Acharyas tell us, that these yeah. two incidents were separate. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Previously, we were, uh, I was thinking that uh, the one Varaha picked up the earth and he, he killed uh, Hiranyaka, Hiranyaksha. So this, is, this was... Yeah, really that, that's the way it's described in Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Picking up the earth at that time, Hiranyaksha challenged him. But the Acharyas tell us that actually there's two incidents. Okay, okay, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, my humble pronouns, uh, Maharaj, uh, my name is Siva. I just would like to ask you, just, just to yeah. confirm, that uh, is it true that uh, the end of this um, varaha uh, varaha incarnation he had a family and then uh, he was refusing to go back to vaigunda and he was playing in the mud and he has got a bunch of kids and all this suddenly he was reminded by his true nature that he is the supreme uh, uh, personality uh, by Lord Shiva, and uh, yet Vara, um, the Varaha Murti refused to accept it. Then Shiva uh, sent an arrow to break the Varaha shell and reveal the true nature of uh, the first God personality. Uh, the Godhead personality uh, is it uh, attached to the Varaha um, that uh, saved the earth? That's all. Uh, well, that I am this, wrong. Uh, this, this is what you're describing. Um, it, this is something from some Puranic incident which is being narrated. You see, this is not what we are hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam. And the, in Jayadeva Goswami's prayer, Jayadeva Goswami glorifies Lord Varaha, how Lord Varaha picks up the earth from the bottom of the universe. So, Keshavadrita Sukara Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare. So it's mentioned, in, that's in Gita Govinda, which is the, in, in the beginning of Gita Govinda, you have Dasavatar Stotra. And the Das Avatar Sotra, one of the avatars, Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha comes uh, before Lord Nisringadev, of course. All right, you have Matsya and Kurma and then Varaha and then Nisringa. So Lord Varaha is the third in the Das Avatar Sotra. But the, the past time you mentioned, uh, I, I'm not familiar with it, and it must be something from Puranic literature. Because I used to listen to some Puranic talks, and one of, uh, one of these guys uh, who is quite well known, like Stuki Sivam, is quite famous of that. He men did mention about it. Um, now he says, so now between them, who is supreme? Uh, so the supreme is uh, infinite. They come, they take uh, uh, forms uh, according to the needs of the bhaktas and the dharma. So supreme personality don't have a, a proper form. And very confusing when I am following a Bhagavadam class and uh, and also the Bhagavad Gita class, we know that it, it, it contradicts it contradicts yes. the purpose so and then my wife says okay we take the good part the bad part 
confusing part we don't have to we just stick on to lord krishna that's all we don't have to confuse with many puranas that's what my final conclusion maharaj Thank yes you. we're taking shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam is a ripened fruit it's a fruit of all the vedas you see that if, if you go through all the puranas you'll get, definitely get confused there's so many contradictory things and that's why the sages all gathered in Naimasharanya and they wanted to get the essence of everything. And that Srimad Bhagavatam that's described to be the fruit of all the Vedas. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay then, Prabhu. Uh, there's a last question, Maharaj. Niharika S. Do you want to ask a question? Yes, um, Hare Krishna Prabhu and Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I would just like to ask a question. Uh, is earth the only place to get moksha or can other jivas from different planets get moksha in their own loka? Yes, in the other planets they can also get moksha, but they're not going to get moksha until the end of the life of Brahma. They have to wait for the uh, time when Lord Brahma leaves. Usually what happens, they, get, they go up to the higher planets and they have to wait in the higher planets until the end of Lord Brahma's life. And at that time when Lord Brahma leaves the universe, when, the, when there's a total devastation of the universe, at that time only, then they can get liberation. But from the earth, you can get liberation directly. And so that's why even the demigods, they aspire to take birth on the earth. And this is the great advantage of being on the earth, that you can get liberation immediately. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. Um, in line with this question, Guru Maharaj, um, I would just like to ask if uh, higher beings from other lokas, uh, if they do something objectionable or not following any regulations that is said through the Deva, um, Vedas, uh, would they fall back into lower beings? Yes. Yes, they, they use up their pious activities, they will come back. Bhagavad uh. Gita describes like that. Bhagavad Gita describes like that, that their, their piety will take them up, but when their piety is exhausted, then they'll come back down. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Okay, Hare Krishna, Guru uh, Maharaj. So anyway, uh, on behalf of Iskon Ipo and, um, and also this uh, First Garden Bhakti Yoga, Namahar Center, I would like to offer a pranam and uh, to you for coming uh, share your wonderful uh, teachings with us. I'm, uh, we are so indebted and grateful. Your class is full of nectar. So I think we can go on listening, but of course time is not permitting. And I also I like to convey my gratitude uh, to Kasturi Devi, Kasturi Krishna Devi Dasi Mataji. Uh, she, she, she asked me this morning, is there any classes that we can slot Maharaj in? Because, and um, immediately we were used to do this, uh, our classes every Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday online. So through this, uh, so I made this opportunity and uh, invited you and you're, and you're so kind enough that you join us today. We felt so honored and I'm really speechless. So my humble obeisance to you Maharaj and thank you so much and I hope that you can also join us for, you can uh, guide us more uh, in more upcoming classes in the future. Thank you so much, Maharaj. My humble pranam. Thank you. 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 so much for coming. Um, it's a truly a fantastic session and uh, today it's a very auspicious day. And uh, on this auspicious day, we had an auspicious association with His Holiness. And also uh, listen to all his uh, nectarian uh, classes. So thank you so much. And Hare Krishna. Good night. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare